This is the story of a little, much-loved city in Florida that is coming together to combat suburban sprawl and chart a better future. It is, at least potentially, the story of a dramatic turnaround. For certain, it's a story about love. Love of the historic place, love of nature, and the land, and love for one's neighbors. We don't know, yet, how the story will end, but we are beginning to realize just how good it could be. Lake Wales has had a vision. It was created back in 1915. Bach Tower Gardens was built here and dedicated in 1929. And Edward Bach really built the garden to inspire people. He paid Frederick Law Olmsted to do a plan for Lake Wales. And uh, we're kind of renewing that vision for Lake Wales. Design has been Lake Wales' superpower since the inception, since the birth of Lake Wales. Olmsted shaped this entire community with his vision. Frederick Law Olmsted Jr. was one of the greatest landscape architects in American history, and nothing was left to chance to Olmsted. Everything was important. The lay of the land, the vistas, how you include nature into the design, the psychology of the place and how people move through the gardens. And he was very active in designing communities too. And so he applied the same theories of design to communities because he was creating places for people. And then an inspiration like Edward Bach, this very visual artistic person saying, I can give something back that people will enjoy forever. Because they had seen so much, they recognized when they saw something special. And there's no question they saw something in this landscape that doesn't exist anyplace else. It's unique to this location. And when Junior is coming into his fore in the early 20th century, he is this very practical, almost engineer saying, how do you also interweave nature so that every place you go, you are protected and inspired by the nature around you. Our need to connect to our natural environment One thing that Lake Wales has, and I think this is some of the, the Olmsted legacy, is its park system. There's major properties right around the lake were preserved for public area. People utilize the bike path. People like the parks in Lake Wales for nature uh, and for exercise. And I think as Lake Wales grows, we should expand that park system uh, so there's connections between neighborhoods. It, like my son, his thrill was to leave our house when he was about eight years old, jump on his bike, ride down to the lake, ride around the lake and go downtown, a kid on a bike going downtown. Lake Wales was born of a new concept in this planning innovation that wanted to create a garden city. founding fathers of Lake Wales wanted to make sure there was recreational space for the community. There's the morning walkers, there's the evening walkers. Almost every morning I'm here for about a three mile walk. I love this park. It's beautiful, wildlife, scenery. It's a real jewel for the city to have this park. So what's wonderful is now here in the present is all of us are able to use what was donated over a hundred years ago. What's really exciting is just about every time I personally go down to the lake, there's someone I know. I love the fact that we know one another. It's like a well-seasoned frying pan, you know. Lake Wales Heritage is an Olmsted Conservancy that is working to complete Olmsted's original designs for the city of Lake Wales. The ultimate goal of Lake Wales Heritage is to plant thousands of trees. It covers hundreds and hundreds of blocks of city streets. 
that deserve to be shaded and beautified and treasured. I'm studying Lake Wales because I believe is a crucial, crucial project that will tell us much about the future of Florida. We want to go back to these great masters that inspired a vision from the past that is still relevant. The shared legacy is something to tie into. The Olmsted legacy goes from the Atlantic to the Pacific, to the Canadian border, to the Mexican border. So I think Lake Wales could become again this hub of ideas that influences the development to come. Nolan's chief concern was to take Olmsted's plan and finish him. And again, that's what Dover Cole is working on today, to take an Olmsted plan and bring it to fruition. So the Lake Wales Ridge goes a long distance, but it's hills and lakes, it's green and blue, and it has citrus, and it has the natural setting that people really like and enjoy, and it is unique and distinctive. So that's treasured by the people here. You don't want to screw it up. So when you go into those homestead communities, you feel like you're in a special place and you see families in its neighborhoods. Sprawl and suburbia has run rampant. Development is something that could spread it out all over the place and actually the decline is perpetuated in the center. Uh, we don't want to do that. With so much development that's going on now, it's like a commodity. It's places to park your car and to live in. So you go from your car to inside and it doesn't have a warm feeling. And you see t this type of development happening all over Florida. And it's really sad. If somebody travels from on the Lake Wales Ridge, from Lake Placid, to Sebring, to Avon Park, to Frostproof, to Lake Wales, to Haines City, to Claremont, and you pass through Lake Wales, and you can't tell one from the other, we're wasting our time. Anybody can do that. They're all doing that. We, in order to be, continue to be unique and distinct, ought to be better than that. And it's easy for a community to lose its way. Uh, the very nature of what that community started out, the very nature of what draws people to that community starts to degrade a little bit here and a little bit there. And then all of a sudden everybody looks up and says, what happened? It's been completely decimated. It's no longer a profitable venture for the citrus growers. Citrus growers have been here in Lake Wales for generations, well over 100 years. They have provided jobs and income and provided for families the, the entire time. And the struggle that they're facing is that because of citrus greening, we are no longer an agricultural economic environment here in Lake Wales. There are so many examples in Florida where we've lost what we've had. The citrus growers have supported our community for decades, and now they need the community support, and we're not gonna leave them hanging. The best way that we can address it is to give everyone a seat at the table and at least um, engage those residents so that they have a voice during the creation of the plan. I hope that we can create a plan that guides the development in a manner that our citizens are proud of the new developments so that they can champion growth rather than resist it. Effective people see the end from the beginning. And Lake Wales Envisioned is about that. It's about 
us trying to look out at what we want our city to become and make it happen rather than it happen to us. I believe Lake Wales can do this. This is going to require a thorough technical investigation, but there's more. We have this entire cultural Olmsted legacy. We have the future of the city hinging upon getting this right. So we have to have the deepest kind of community soul searching, maybe the deepest in a hundred years. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out today. Good evening. Great crowd. Uh, and it comes in the back of the room. We absolutely have to have the participation. My hopes was that our community would unite and come together around this vision, and that's obviously occurred. Lake Wales must provide jobs and workplaces as part of the basic infrastructure that supports the community. This plan prioritizes creating mixed-use settlements with sites for small and large employers, nearby existing residences, as well as as part of new neighborhoods. Create a diversity of product that people could use. It's been there since the 1800s and it's producing $64 million an acre. And there's a pattern in this old architecture that we used to build cities this way because it's really, really smart from a tax production standpoint. So it builds community wealth. The beauty of a plan is it keeps you focused on the right things. And I think including the right businesses and the right homes and the right neighborhoods and the right commercial entities, I think that's gonna provide an amazing future for the kids and for future generations after them. Lake Wells and Vision means to me revitalization, a historic area being shined upon and the connection from uptown to downtown. The core improvement area is really the legacy of the city of Lake Wells. It sits right smack dab in the middle of the city. It's important that we focus our attention on revitalizing and highlighting the core improvement area because we do have a lot of blight and vacant lots, room to grow and room to really capture the essence of our city. This neighborhood was neglected for decades so for the city, for the residents, stakeholders, business owners to all come together, that's how we overcome decades of neglect. This is wonderful. We're on our path of revitalizing downtown Lake Wales. We're gonna make Lake Wales beautiful all over again because there's a new facades coming up, better street walking, better everything. Look at the construction. We're happy about that. The great thing about being a small business owner is I can relate with the customers. My employees do know all my regulars' names. My regulars come in here so much and we want them to keep coming back. The experience that I'm trying to offer here is the live music, our specials and our food. And it could be anything from a comedy show to karaoke. There's always gonna be something here for them to come see.
The plan for Lake Wales must start with the green parts. By identifying the priority areas that contribute to the regional green network, a framework will emerge for what will become the new parts of town and what land should be preserved as natural areas. One of the or real jewels of the ridge here is Tiger Creek. Uh, and Tiger Creek was a creek that Edward Bach had canoed down and fell in love with it and, and said, we've got to protect this. And so he had hired Olmsted to go out and draw up a plan to protect Tiger Creek. About uh, uh, 40 years later, uh, that vision was picked up again. Bach Tower Gardens worked with the, the Nature Conservancy and started to preserve that land. And today it's a 5,000 acre preserve. And we have an opportunity to expand on that vision. All of these need interconnections. If we could get corridors between them, uh, it can be a stronger natural area. I was pleasantly surprised at the amount of value and emphasis that the folks in this area, in this community, placed on land conservation and green space. It's going to be really important for us to, as we continue to grow as a city, we continue to grow with the space the green space, the trails, the networking for the future. So the overarching objective, what has now been termed the Big Green Network, is to protect large swaths of high value natural lands. First priority was to connect the historic scrub and sand hill habitats to those tracks north and south and to a certain degree outside of the study area with the Kissimmee River corridor so when we put the Florida Ecological Greenway Network layer on top of this, a corridor of regional significance exists along the eastern portion of the utility service area. But what that gave us was this green area along the eastern side of our study area, and we called it the Ridge to River Corridor. So this is an area of high priority for conservation land acquisition the second area where we wanted to focus was in an area to protect the water resources and habitat in the headwaters of the Peace River. This conservation corridor is mapped to add to that landscape linkage priorities. Where's the intact habitat and where's the biological diversity, which we've called the Peace River Headwaters Corridor. Third on this list is in the northwest corner of the study area and we knew that we wanted to protect the wetlands and water resources along the Peace Creek Canal system and connect that to a larger effort with Winter Haven. We need green space, we need greenery, and we need to make sure that we're accounting for the fact that the world is getting hotter. And so we're talking about keeping the trees that we have and adding more trees. We did a study of about 250,000 Medicare beneficiaries and we found that our beneficiaries who lived on blocks with higher levels of greenness had lower levels of heart disease, lower levels of depression, lower levels of obesity, um, lower levels of dementia, even lower levels of Alzheimer. Trees are very important. It makes everything look clean and nice. If we're going to be the garden city, we need to have some trees around here. Lake Wales must establish standards for the Lake Wales Way, the types of new neighborhoods the community wants to see here. It'll retain the special sense of place while also allowing for progress, growth, and change. This is the plan. Today, the historic neighborhoods showcase the Lake Wales Way to build. Parks, graceful connected streets, mixed use, small homes and grand homes together, front porches, alleys, proud civic buildings, and an unrelenting emphasis on the public realm, the spaces between our buildings. Lake Wales should be livable. It should be a place where people can work and play and be members of their family and do all the things that you want to do in life all in the community that you live in. There are certain fundamentals that we know have huge impact on our health. And this is like 50 years of research on the first one, which is social interaction. We. People all across the world, all different economic strata, ethnic groups, cultural groups, the one greatest predictor of your longevity and health is the level of social interaction. And that social interaction is beyond our families. It's the people we see on a daily basis. It's a larger world of social interaction. And the second 
is physical activity. Dick Jackson did that seminal issue of the American Journal of Public Health. And they looked at Atlanta and they found that the people who spent more time in cars, this makes sense, right? Had uh, worse health outcomes in, in the sense of like more heart disease, higher levels of obesity, diabetes. And they found that people who had more physical activity were healthier. We love sitting on our front porch because when we are here in the morning having our coffee, we see our neighbors walking by, we can wave, we connect. It turns out that the casual interactions are really good for our brain. We stop, we think, things happen. So, and then we would have been walking, so that's the physical activity part of it. And likely we would have been exposed to greenness because we would have been in one of these leafy neighborhoods. It's a really different experience than you would have if it was a garage door in the front and everyone was hidden inside or facing towards the back. This is really sort of the outdoor room of this house. It's possible to do nice developments where you build livable neighborhoods, where you have parks and inter interconnecting, where the design suits communities and people coming together. You know, people feel it. They may not understand what are the components of it, but they feel good design. Do I want it to just be cookie cutters? No. I want it to be a neighborhood, not just an area where houses are. So much of what we hope to get done has been outlawed. And I think that's because of an unwillingness for us to really be a community with one another. So we write rules to try and stop everything bad from happening. And in the process, we tend to weed out everything good that could happen at the same time. So all of these zoning requirements that almost mandate uniformity and monotony, that's because that's easy to control. Risk demands that we continue to be a community with one another. This community has a history of showing the importance of the arts and creativity. Well designed, uh, we're in one of those buildings. This building is significant because it helps us connect to the past. And so it's beautiful to be able to offer these creative arts into the present and carry them with us into the future. Updike Hall is actually the former sanctuary of the Holy Spirit Catholic Church congregation. They built this building in 1927. It was used until the late 80s when the community rallied to turn it into a great community space for creativity. And it became the home of the Lake Wales Arts Council. Fran Updike and a few other people rallied to make that happen. And because of that, we decided to name the hall in her honor. Historic preservation is essential to what the future of our community will have because we bring the past with us. We may ask ourselves, why is this happening? Why am I stuck in traffic all the time? It's not just about one thing. It's really about land use and the way that we design our streets and with it being network versus isolated streets. We've isolated our land uses. We've created these pods that have very limited connectivity. Well, the top scenario, most of those trips are ending up having to come right out on that road and everything relying on that one spine road to get around. System is really more set up for longer trips and the street ends up being designed only for cars. However, we start to look at the other scenario. We start to mix the land uses, put commercial close to houses, put the schools closer to houses, tie in that big green network within these areas and connect it all with a network of walkable streets that are connected to each other, suddenly you don't have to rely on that one road. There's multiple ways of getting around, not only by car, but because things are set up more for those short trips, it really makes it a lot easier to walk or bike. It allows you to really design streets for people, not just cars. Transportation becomes this incredibly important issue that requires real planning, real ideas, real solutions. They are equipped to say, where do roads go? How do roads look? How do pedestrians move along these same corridors? How do we all use these same shared spaces safely and efficiently and beautifully? Uh, hit by a motor vehicle traveling at 20 miles an hour have about a 9 out of 10 chance of survival. 
if that speed increases to 30, then 40, it goes down dramatically. Short answer, speed kills. The, kind of the main entry points coming into Lake Wales are not very attractive. And if we're going to be a city and a garden, then all of Lake Wales needs to look like a city and a garden. But you have to be practical and say, <laughs> will it work in Polk County, let alone in Lake Wales? I know all of the national builders, all the regional and all the locals. I started asking with an open mind, all of the other builders, every builder, and I didn't leave one out, not one national, will a traditional neighborhood work in Polk County, anyone in Polk County? And to, and to every, every builder, Lennar, DR, DR Horton, no one would touch a traditional neighborhood development in Polk County. No one will touch it. I couldn't put an alleyway in any of these projects. It won't work. It just won't work. We know Florida is a magnet state. Everybody's moving to Florida. Polk County is a bedroom community to Tampa and Orlando. Nothing we can do about that. You know, I've probably designed and planned probably a thousand subdivisions in the last 50 years. Polk County is a bedroom community to Tampa and Orlando. Polk County is a bedroom community to Tampa and Orlando. To what we're trying to do? Objections? To those who say it can't be done, I would say stand back, because we're getting ready to do it. Well, of course there's a market for traditional neighborhoods in Lake Wales. It will reach out to all three big chunks of household types, young folks, older folks, retirees, and, and uh, empty nesters. And the big piece is families. 55% of the market for a traditional neighborhood within Lake Wales would be family households. If you build an environment people care about, they'll come in droves. Change is sometimes difficult to embrace. It's not all running through the roses. And when people object to things, in my experience, they usually are unaware of maybe some facts. <laughs> Well, the first thing is, listen, I anticipate that there will be objections, otherwise it's not a legitimate process. We look at urban places, we look at new urban places, neighborhoods that are built and designed the way Olmsted designed neighborhoods. Don't let developers paint you into a corner. I would be insulted if a developer told me, well, you can't do that in my town. Of course you can. We tell them that it's just not going to work in Lake Wales anymore. We want nicer. We need to legalize and incentivize traditional neighborhoods, the places people love. So we've proposed reforms to the land development regulations, including an ordinance for traditional neighborhood developments, or TNDs. This approach sets standards for quality design while also removing barriers to a wider range of housing for all types of households. For us to be papered over like everybody else is inconsistent with who we are. The devil is in the details, but the potential's in the details too. And sometimes you gotta, you know, push past the devil to get that creative um, genius that's locked up, but that's hard. And the reason we don't like to do it is because we're gonna bump up against each other and we're gonna disagree. It takes planning by the city. It takes having good standards set. And developers may be fearful of, you know, these new designs, it's not what they normally do, but there's so many examples where it's been successful throughout this country. There's no reason not to be doing it here in Lake Wales. Do you believe in economic weakness or do you believe in economic strength? And we've all heard and been taught since we were kids that there's strength in numbers. And this is the challenge that Lake Wales has embraced of how do we do what Nolan envisioned 100 years ago? How do we take the natural, the rural, and the urban landscape together and synergize them to create a great community? That's the opportunity that Lake Wales has, and the next steps will be difficult, 
They'll be challenging, but you have a wonderful set of principles to follow. Good design, cost-effectively, creates value for people. We love this neighborhood because the houses face the street. They are friendly to each other, just like the people in Lake Wales. And we really feel like the Lake Wales way is the porch facing the street, a life outside on the porch, and actually interacting with people in real life, face to face. That's, I think, what attracts people really to small towns uh, like Lake Wales. But now there's enough data and enough evidence from enough developments. I mean, heck, y'all have done a bunch where the more that you add to it, the more valuable it gets, the more wealth it creates, the more it begets more. In a typical suburban pattern, it's the opposite. It's, it's the first one out there wins, and then every new development thereafter takes away the value of the place because it becomes more hostile to walk or drive around. What we're hoping is that we can match the citrus growers and the landowners with developers that build traditional neighborhoods so that they can maximize the green space and highlight the parts of Central Florida that make it so special. It truly is a grand vision for what we can be. We're going to polish it up and make it something that we can share with other people. We're just getting this started. We got to get it going. And now is a chance to take it to the next step, to act upon what we've been offered. I'm happy that we'll be able to have more people downtown enjoying our historic area. Together, if we get in on this, overcome our differences, see the vision, see the future of Lake Wales as a strong economy that includes business, commercial, beautiful neighborhoods, the whole pie, if you would. There's no way we can lose. You got a responsibility now when you're in charge. Look what happened before you. This is an obligation.